Welcome to another episode of Failing to Success. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki with Cosmic Design. Today on the show, we have Jonathan Jones. His company is called J81 Studios, and it's a commercial photography company. He's now had the business for two years. So, John, what got you started in this space? Oh, man. I guess you could say I was the age my kids are now, probably seventh seventh grade when I got this wild free copy of a software from my grandfather who was a hobbyist photographer, a thing called Photoshop. It had just come out. And I had a lot of fun putting extra heads on cats and retouching fruit and stuff as a kid. And then we'll, we'll take the long journey short. I toured a high school as a, as a kid and I saw people using this Photoshop software that I had fallen in love with at home. And I thought, oh, I have to be a graphic artist if I'm going to use Photoshop because that's the people that are using it. So I went through ad agencies. I went through in-house creative. I was managing a team for a, a big name brand, all design, all art direction, was creative director for a tool company. And the whole time I had a camera in my hand, the whole time I was shooting, the whole time I was doing product. And it was like, this, this just feels more natural. So when the company I was with got bought out by a much larger, much more corporate competitor, threw me back into a world that I had left after leaving the big one. I didn't want to have four bosses and three VPs over my head anymore. So I decided now's the time. And I walked away and started this this wild little endeavor here. Be glad you made the jump into your own business. Yeah, I do it again a hundred times. So what's the difference between your lifestyle now versus when you were working for these big corporate companies? It's a lot more terrifying, but the freedom is great and I can be anywhere I want to be, but really it's both things, right? You hear the stories about all the freedom that you gain, but you also have this realization that instead of working a nine hour day, you're now working all the time. It's all about the hustle. I'm only ending my second year here. So things are getting more smooth. Things are getting ironed out. The first year was just like pedal to the metal, man, and just just go, 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 go. But now I'm I'm actually finding some breathing room and things are starting to kind of flow a little bit. Are you finding use with all the AI tools that are out now? Yep, absolutely. I was early adapting on chat GPT when I realized I could pre-populate my entire social calendar in about three hours. It was like, done. Okay, don't think about 23 anymore. What about on the image stuff? A little bit, less than you might think. It's really just not there yet. I mean, the level of work that I do and the type of commercial clients I have, you can spot the, the auto-generated stuff pretty quickly. I've used it a little bit for background filling. Like if I'm doing a product and I need to throw in an environment, I can use the AI image gens to make a large whatever it has to be and project that onto a big screen behind where I'm shooting. And that's helpful. But as far as like actually integrating it into finished work at like the resolution it's rendered, it's not there yet. It's not there. It's good to know. I played with it a little bit as well. For my use, it's like social media posting and stuff like that. I'm happy, but I can see. Oh, yeah. You. So along this path of building this company and even through your career, is there any obstacles you want to share? Some stories? I mean, there's the big one, right? The the fear of just taking a step out the door and going out on your own. That's that's a huge fear. And I think every entrepreneur faces it at some point, unless you're one of those guys that just decides right out of high school, you're going to run your own business. And then you never have to cross that threshold. But for me, I was already 39. So coming up on 40 and had a family, have a house, have a mortgage, have a wife. And it's like, yep, I'm going to walk away from this really comfortable, safe, good range salary for a creative director to zero <laughs> effectively. And I'm not a business guy. I'm an art guy. I'm, I learn the business as I go. So yeah, there's been some stumbling blocks for sure. I would say things that saved me early on were just having a friend who had been down a similar path and gave me really solid advice about get an attorney first and an accountant second, then think about launching. Once you have your, your legal and your money kind of squared away and in good hands, it's a lot less stressful. It's a lot less scary. Yeah, it's, it's good to rely on experts because then you have the time to focus on what you're good at. 100%. Oh my God. Yeah. Surround yourself by people who know the things that you don't know. Like I can, yeah. I mean, I know that's a little bit of rich dad, poor dad seeping through, but like, it's so true. You know, if you don't know how to do something, find someone who does and get them in your circle. So has there been a client you took on where the project really stood out in your mind? There's been a few. I had a retainer client for a while out of Japan that was doing all anime products. And I have no idea. I don't have a background in anime. I'm like, I just didn't grow up with it. So I had to learn that as I went. And I actually got a regional Addy award for the photography that came out of that client. So that was, that was really cool. And then more recently I had an ad agency out of the middle of Hartford refer out to me for a, a product relaunch from a food storage company from the seventies that was doing a rebrand and relaunch. And so it had a, 
a couple of days shoot, we had models and props and video and photo and like everything all going at once. And the results came out fantastic and they're super psyched about it. So you do a lot of product-based type of content? Yeah. Yeah. I do. I shoot entirely for business. I don't do the, the weddings, babies, pets, kids, all that stuff. This is business only commercial photography. So I, I'm really in two buckets. I've got people and I've got things. For people, I'm shooting inside of businesses, behind the scenes, follow the contractor out on the job, get up in the scaffolding, get him doing what he does so that his customers can see that he's an authentic person. There's nothing, there's no bigger turnoff than stock photography in a mid-sized business because you, you look at these websites and you, you might spot some things like no palm trees in Boston, guys. Like, let's, it just, it feels so disingenuous right away. So it's so important for the companies of that size to get really good, authentic imagery of themselves. And then of course I do headshots for the more corporate side of things. And then the other half of the business is product. And that is either shooting for e-commerce and catalog sales. So it's like all on white, like the, the Amazon type products that you see, or the, the really fun ones, the, the sexy billboard photos with the smoke and the mirrors and you, you see all the behind the scenes photo magic. That's the stuff I love. That's, I mean, behind this wall is my big studio bay and it's I'm in the middle of a build out for a shoot tomorrow and it's, it's going great. It's going to look awesome. Yeah. Those sound really cool. I'm sure, I'm sure the e-commerce stuff has been pretty big for you over the past couple of years, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's one of those hit or miss some days that it feels like that's all I'm doing for like a month straight. And then it just goes crickets for a quarter and then it kind of comes back up. It's, it really depends on who kind of lines up in my hopper and what they need. I find a lot of the reliable thing is the behind the scenes business because everybody needs it. You've got to be authentic on social media. You've got to be good on your website. And so that's, that's always there. And the e-commerce, I'm shooting some on Monday out in the Worcester area. With the e-commerce product base, what would content like that look like? So there's, there's kind of two facets on that, right? There's the, there's the static product isolated on white, and then there's the in use and the lifestyle. And it really, it client by client, it varies. Some really just need those white images so they can sell their physical thing. And then it's, it's kind of like a natural upsell to be like, well, we have it in studio. We have it lit. We have this workspace. Why don't, to your blender example, why don't I bring in a model and have her throw some food through it? And then we have all of that as well. And really it's kind of like the business behind the scenes. It just comes back to authenticity, right? So the yeah. product can look amazing, but if you can show it working too, that's even better. How are you finding these new clients? Oh my God, everywhere. A lot of it is referral marketing. So because I come from the world of ad agencies and ad advertising, I still have some connections in there. And I know that that's where to look for more business type jobs, but I'm also on LinkedIn. People find me there. I'm also, I am a member of a networking group because I realized as a solopreneur looking at the same four walls all the time, I needed some people in my life. So I joined a networking group and I can kind of bounce ideas off of them and it gets me out of the studio once a week. And that's, that's been great. It's it had some, some headshot type exec type shots come in through that. No product, no manufacturing. Cause that's just not the nature of those groups, but it does get me out there and it does add referrals. So that's always nice. Yeah. That's I'm sure word of mouth is really big in your industry. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you do something right for someone and then they tell their colleagues about it. And then it's that back of mind thing. Next time they know someone who needs a thing it's like, oh, my friend knew this guy who did this great job. You should see his work. And then I get a phone call. Do you have any more stories of struggles throughout your career or, or this business? Oh my God. Yeah, man. There's been a lot. Everything from capital to get going to just, just managing the daily learning the business side of running a business. Like I said, I'm, I'm an art guy. I came in from a design and creative background and then it was like, oh, I don't know that I have to pay for my LLC every single year. Ooh, okay. I didn't budget for that. Or how much am I supposed to set aside or how many bank accounts do I need? Or I, there's, there's been a lot of like, just learn by getting the bill or finding the thing or having someone call me on whatever it is. And it's, you have, you have to kind of like scramble, scratch your head, get some advice and then move forward around it. But it's been all right. I mean, still here, still standing, not going anywhere. Yeah, definitely. Is there a pivotal moment? If you look back on your life, could be anything that you think really changed things for you. As far as the business goes, business, um, personal, anything. Yeah. I think my, my grandfather that was the hobbyist photographer with his own little dark room back when I was a child had way more impact on me then than I realized until I was an adult. Yeah, you know, just kind of watching him work and being fascinated by the darkroom chemicals and seeing how that came together and then having him give me a copy of his photo. Sorry, Adobe, I got it for free back back in the 80s. Uh, having that copy just kind of 
and his influence and just seeing the images that he had created around his own house kind of got me in that mindset early on. I mean, I'd always been a creative kid. My mom would tell stories about she'd buy me a coloring book and there'd be no crayon anywhere on the pages, but the inside and back cover would be completely filled because there's no lines in the way and I could draw my own things. So it's outside the lines from an early, early age, which has been great. But yeah, that whole artistic, creative photo exposure. And also he was a troublemaker just like I am. So that, that kind of, that kind of clicked. That's a great story. So Jonathan, if our listeners wanted to get in touch with you or your company, how would they do so? You can find me on my website. That's j81studios.com. There's a contact button on there. There's a chat form. You can book a meeting with me anytime. I'll talk to anybody. I love hopping on Zoom calls and meeting the whole world. And my travel or my service range is really anywhere in the U.S. I'll go anywhere. I'll shoot for anyone. I love it. Well, thanks, John, for being on the show. And thank you, everybody, for listening to another episode of Failing to Success. I'm your host, Chad Kalecki with Cosmic Design. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.